Next this afternoon on TVS, we enter the world of... swords and periwigs and double skirt coats with colored lappets, when gentlemen wore ruffles and gold lace waistcoats of Padawasoy and taffeta, Gloucester was a fine, rich city. The folk who lived there knew how to enjoy life, and most of all, at Christmas time. Girl, Mrs. Speck, and indeed she should be high spirited just three days before our wedding in the cathedral. And what a spectacle that will be! A spectacle you will be without a grand coat to your back. It will not do to be seen so dull at your nuptials. Dull, dull. Well, we shall deal with your dull this very day. We shall wear finery that shall be the envy of the county. But where will you find such finery in these three days remaining? Well, I'll, 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 I'll have it bespoke, Mrs. Speck. Yes, you know, made to measure. Come, Sam, go before. <laughs> In those days, there lived a tailor in Gloucester, much respected for his skill. He was called John Pritchard, and gentlemen came from miles around to order their finery from him. He sat in the window of his little shop in Westgate Street from morning until dark. And all day long, while the light lasted, he sewed and snippeted, piecing out his satin and pompadour and loop string. Stuff had strange names and was very expensive in the days of the tailor of Gloucester. But although he sewed fine silk and made fine clothes for his neighbors, he himself was very, very poor. And in the winter, very, very cold. Oh, no waste, no waste. These be too narrow measure. For naught but waistcoats for gentlemen mice and bonnets for their ladies. Well, that's no bread at all. I'm cut on the cross, it is no bread at all. Dip it for mice, ribbons for mobs for mice. <laughs> Best of this happy season to you. And worship, Mrs. Spikes. Ah, his worship has a commission for you. Mm. Oh, yes, I have a commission for you. Now, Mr. Pritchard, you must know that I am to be married three days from now on Christmas Day at 12 in the morning. But Gloucester speaks of nothing else, mm. sir. It's a fine match, beautiful young lady. Mm. Yet, yeah, well, we. 
that is, I <clears throat> require a fine appearance for this fine occasion. And who better to suit me for it than you, Mr. Pritchard, our tailor of Gloucester. You have been chosen, Mr. Pritchard. A great honor, sir, and one that I shall carry out to the best of my poor skill. Ah, now this is the stuff. Get, get. Cherry colored uh, corded silk mm -hmm. for the waist. For the coat, embroidered with pansies and roses. Yeah, embroidered with uh, pansies and roses. Yes, mm. yes and, and, and lined with uh, yeah, fine yellow taffeta. Mm. Now, for the waistcoat... Cream colored satin. Yes, cream colored satin. Trimmed with gauze and green worsted chenille. It would, would, Ah! A mouse! Oh! Nasty vermin! Oh! Oh! The place is crawling with them! Oh, it will oh. never harm you, ma'am. Hunger and cold may hurt the body, but oh. I've never yet heard a mouse bring her to anyone. No. Oh. No, no, no. Get you down, Mrs. Speck. Sam oh. here will take good care of you. Oh. I ain't afraid of no mice. Come here, come here. And now, Your Worship, hmm? to the measurements. Ah. Uh, mm. Yes. This neck is, uh, 19 uh, inches. Oh, yeah. Chest <gasps> is uh, oh, 45. <sighs> uh, we'll have a very uh, full skirt and uh, low pockets. I think that should please the people. Oh, and some of those, those, those very finely stitched buttonholes that you are so famous for, Mr. Pritchard. In cherry colored silk and twist. In uh, cherry colored uh, silk and twist. Cherry colored silken twist. I'm sure to have some about the place somewhere. Oh, well, you have very nimble fingers, I hope, Mr. Pritchard, for I am to be married on Christmas Day after Matins. Oh, but it, uh, today's Wednesday, uh, Christmas Day is always on Saturday. But that leaves but three days. Can was... you do this, Mr. Pritchard? Will you be our man for this job? So I will. Given health and good light. <laughs> we rely on you, Mr. Pritchard. Yeah, do we not, Mrs. Speck? Oh, we do rely on you, Mr. Pritchard. All Gloucester and the counties will attend. They will expect a sartorial appearance. Uh, you, yes, my thought, exactly. Uh, now, you will be wondering what is to be your reward for this labor, Mr. Pritchard. Mm -hmm. hmm? And when the garments are made and delivered, fit and ready and in time, Twenty guineas shall be yours. Twenty guineas? Twenty guineas. Twenty guineas? I remember, Mr. Pritchard, Christmas Day in the forenoon. It wouldn't do to keep everyone waiting, would it, Mr. Pritchard? So, ply your needle well, Master Taylor. We rely on you. Twelve of the clock, in three days' time. Twenty guineas. <laughs> yes, thank you. Twenty guineas. I shall make my fortune. The cloth to be cut on the bias. Nineteen inches round the neck. Forty-five round the chest. Twenty guineas. Just more than I earned in a whole year. This work shall be my finest. Thank you. 
That day in Gloucester was bitterly cold. The snow clouds came down, and it was early dark. But the tailor worked on by candlelight, cutting and shaping his cloth, moving it this way and that, while the scraps of cloth and cherry-colored corded silk gathered round his feet. And before long, the snow began to come down, great soft flakes of it. And even his candles were not enough for the tailor's tired old eyes. There. Ah, there's no breadth at all, and cut on a cross. No breadth at all, all cut, ready for sewing in the morning. I shall make my fortune 20 guineas. Now there's 12 pieces for the coat, and four pieces for the waistcoat, and the pocket flaps, the buttons and the lining, and the... <laughs> and here is silver braid and gold thread, and a cherry colored silken twist for the buttonholes, but oh, well, I haven't sufficient for one and twenty holes. Oh, well, let's see. Oh. Oh, it's... oh, it's cherry colored silken twist, but not enough for the whole coat. There's no more twist. Oh, God. Uh, Alach. That's all my money gone and no more twist. And, and, uh, I. <coughs> oh, Alach. I'm worn to a rabbit and I like to catch a cold. I. Oh. Pray God it may not turn to a fever. I have work enough for a whole week. Taylor did not live in his shop. No one lived there at night except for the little brown mice, and they run in and out without any keys. He slept at night in his lodgings in College Court, next to the way to College Green. <coughs> Although it was not a big house, the tailor was so poor he only rented the kitchen. He lived all alone with his cat, which was called Simon. And he was also very fond of mice, though he gave him no satin for coats. We shall make our fortune. But I am want to raveling, for I, I have no more twist. I'm not in my usual health. I have a fever coming on. I'm all sinking. Take this groat, which is our last four pence, and sink in. Take this china picking. It's a penny for milk, a penny for bread, and a penny for sausage, yeah? And sink in. With the last penny of our groat. Buy me a penneth, a cherry-coloured silken twist, so that I may finish Mayor Raxter's coat. And lose not the last penny, or I am undone and worn to a thread paper, for I have no more twist. I think, Sinky, so. twenty guineas. You shall live like a rich merchant. <laughs> Milk twice a day. Oh, come on, Sinky. I'm not in good health. I have a fever. Please. Never Gloucester to be married to Christmas Day morning. Oh, and he thought it. A coat, cut on a bias, and an embroidered waistcoat. A shirt. So tough.
How curious. I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> and the pocket holes are set about with thread of gold embroidered. strange. the bread of the sausages. Uh, where's my twist? Oh, sick kid. Today is Wednesday. The mayor is to be married this Saturday. I cannot finish the coat without the last piece of twi twist. Twist? Why twist, Simkin? Why twist?
done so much work and no more twist. No. So the tailor took to his bed, sick in body and troubled in his mind. He had but two days left in which to finish the mayor's finery. And no assistant in his shop, no twist to finish the work, and he himself in a poor way. It was a bleak outlook for our tailor at last. Not with his worship servants. We'll set thee in the stock cells. Show a proper respect. <laughs> in the tailor's shop here in Westgate Street, the embroidered silk and satin lay cut out on the table. One and twenty buttonholes. But who should come and sew them when the window was barred and the door fast locked? All that day and through the next night, the tailor was ill of a fever and liked to get worse. Oh. No. Oh. 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 Yeah. You are a humbug, sir, an imposter. Call yourself a tailor? I'll have the law on you, sir. Paint me crimson, else you shall shut up shop and never open more. They say it takes 12 tails to make a man. How many does it take to make a goat fit for a man? It must be ready by 12 o'clock, sir. 12 o'clock! <laughs> Yeah. When they left to stitch the coat, alack, I'm undone. I must rise and set to work. Oh, oh it's really bad. This is Jerry Collins' single fist. Cut by the skies of the two hearts of twenty. the market folk went trudging to the snow to buy their geese and turkeys and home again to bake their Christmas pies. But there would be no Christmas dinner for Simkin and the poor old tailor of Gloucester with not a stitch done on the coat. It's 
past locked. Now, where can he be? He knows that the mayor is getting married tomorrow. What's got into the man? How shall I explain to his worship? Never trust a tailor. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe what? Can't got your tongue. Can't speak out loud. Maybe he works at home, ma'am. No tailor works at home. They need their paraphernalia.
Christmas morning. Well, I have lain here for three days and the mayor's coat not yet started. And I have no more twist nor coin to buy none. Well, oh, Simkin, you are a prince amongst cats. And you shall dine like one. Milk twice a day. <laughs> oh, alack, I am worn to unravelling, but I have my twist. Oh, so little time and the mayor to be married at noon. We must hasten, Simkin. To the shop! At last, Mr. Pritchard. Well, I hope the garments are ready. Where have you been these past three days? Lying abed, I dare say, instead of plying your needle. But look, well, I... you have a contract with his worship, Mr. Pritchard. It will not please him to look foolish in front of the people. Oh. The mayor does approach, ma'am. Mm -hmm. He's all ready. Ah, Mr. Pritchard, a Merry Christmas to you. All is well, I trust. Wouldn't do to keep my good lady waiting, would it? I can't wait to see it. <laughs> well, ma'am, what do you think? Will it suit me? I'm not sure, sir. I further fear it is not quite finished, sir. Not quite finished? Mm. What do you mean? Give me that key, man. <laughs> Oh, stripe me purple. What, Mrs. Speck? Look at this. I am looking, sir. I stand astounded. Oh, not quite finished. Your humor, eh, Mr. Pritchard? <laughs> Never trust a tailor who lacks humor. <laughs> My sentiment exactly. Oh. What, Mr. Pritchard, a humorous tailor of gloss? Oh, this is fine work. Fine work. I do not deserve your praise, sir. Oh, and modest, too. We shall learn from you, yes. Mr. Pritchard. Sir, just one last little job, sir. A few moments only. Ah. Now, now, <laughs> Mrs. Speck. Oh, do I look dull now, mm. Mrs. Speck? Eh? <laughs> what a fine finish and such neat, small stitches. Does it do me proud, Mrs. Speck? Sam, does it do me proud? Oh, tis the most beautifulest coat ever worn by a mare of Gloucester, sir. It does you proud, sir. Ah, uh, but it takes the tailor to make the man. <laughs> oh, you have done me proud, Mr. Pritchard. And this shall not go unrewarded. <clears throat> Here, sir, are your 20 guineas. Oh, sir. Ah. Oh. Oh, Keith. This shall do you good, Mr. Pritchard. You may depend upon it. This is work so fine. Maybe. The fairies had a hand in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. The fairies. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, oh, Mr. Billows. The whole city and your bride await, Your Worship. When you are ready, I shall go before you. You are right, Mr. Billows. Time and high time we were gone. You mustn't keep the good lady waiting. Wouldn't do, Mr. Billows. Wouldn't do at all. Worship! Hmm? Oh. You are to come to our wedding, Mr. Pritchard. You are to be our honored guest. Well, shall I cut a dash, ma'am? Does it strike the eye? All oh, that and more, sir. <laughs> Twas made by the fairies, secretly during the night. <laughs> His worship the mayor is to be married today. 
is Christmas Day in the morning. Oh, Gloucester, my people, greetings to you on this Christmas morn, wherein the saviour of this world was born. I, and my bride, thank you for the goodwill that you have shown us, but more particularly, we wish to thank our tailor of Gloucester, Mr. Pritchard, for suiting us so finely this day. He has the most remarkable shop where, they say, coats are made at night by the fairies. <laughs> no, it is true. They are so. A Merry Christmas! The best of the season be yours, and a Happy New Year! <laughs> day began the luck of the tailor of Gloucester. He grew quite stout and he grew quite rich. He made wonderful waistcoats for all the wealthy merchants of Gloucester and all the fine gentlemen from the countryside round about. Never before were seen such ruffles, such embroidered cuffs and lappets, but his buttonholes were the greatest triumph of all. I wonder they could be made by a little old man in spectacles with old crooked fingers and a thimble on his thumb. The stitches of them buttons were so small, so small, they looked as if they'd been stitched by mice. <laughs> 